Hey, what's up guys? Hope everybody's doing well and having a great day. In this video, we're going to take a look at the mysterious anomaly that's weakening Earth's magnetic field. It seems to be splitting in two. Article dated May 26th of 2020. I've got some things I want to add to that. Some, some observations that I've known and have known about over the years that I want to compare it to and some things that we could possibly see in the future and compare it to some things that are going on now with regard to other anomalies. What if this anomaly was kind of wandering itself? I'm talking about pulsing or, you know, it was going in wobbles, strengthening, weakening, strengthening, weakening. And during those time frames, it's showing us things on radar that we don't normally see. I've been getting more and more screenshots from people all around the world that have noticed these anomalies up in Canada. This one you can see right on the Canada-US border. These things are quite large, talking a few hundred miles wide. And I've got more that I want to share with you guys that are different sizes with regard to, I'm talking a few hundred miles in size. And I've also got a very unique triangle that appeared right over here. It's a perfect triangle. Stick around for that. I think you're going to find that very interesting. But I'm just wondering if there's these fluctuations in the magnetic field energy are causing these things to appear on radar that we don't normally see, much like here in the Schumann resonance energy. On the 26th, you can see there were big spikes in the frequency of planet Earth. What if it's related to the magnetic field somehow? Well, you can see there is an absence of energy right here. Big black pillar that lasted for nearly four hours. What's that telling us? It's the either absence of energy, clearly an absence of data. Is it because there was too much or not enough? I don't know. Just wanted to touch base on that because that's highly unusual. You don't normally see that on here. Also in this video, I wanted to touch base real quick on the little project we're doing out front here. We've been having a good time watching this thing grow. It's not necessarily the plant itself. Yeah, it's pretty neat, but it's how fast it grows. It's reached 109 inches right now. Last time I measured it was 102, so it's gone up 7 inches in a couple of days. Um, actually, I measured it earlier today, and it's actually over 110. So this thing is growing at a very fast rate. I've had other people share photos with me. Angelique out of North Florida. You can see her son, who's 6 foot tall, standing in front of this towering agave plant. Look at that thing probably 24 feet tall. If you stacked four of him, you'd probably get almost to the top, I would say. Maybe three and a half. It's probably around 20 to 24 feet tall. Nathan also shared his with me. His is 12 feet tall. And I think once they reach their maximum height, which they're all different, you can see how much taller this one is on the right than this one. This one's about 12. They uh, flower out. So it's like some sort of a, a sprouting antenna that comes up out of the ground. Really kind of neat. I've never seen anything grow that fast. So the one that we had, 109 inches now and climbing. But back to the mysterious anomaly in the Earth's uh, magnetic field. What if there were other things at play here, not only just this anomaly that they found here? What if there was also a tilt in the axis? Earth was tilting a little too far to the south. And let's say that this was normal. Let's say that this happens every thousand years or 2,000 years. Well, none of us would really know about it because we weren't here 2,000 years ago. Maybe it happens every 5,000 years. But what if the Earth was tilting too far to the south and it was creating these magnetic anomalies? Because there's two types of north poles. There's a geomagnetic north and then there's a magnetic north. The magnetic north is wandering, has been wandering for quite some time. And here's the thing, and I want to show you on a map that I made based off of this data right here, and that's the magnetic north. Look at how far the magnetic north has moved in the last 26 years compared to the last 90 years. Almost double, 758 miles from 1994 to 2020. From 1904 to 1994, which is a span of 90 years, moved 402 miles. So you can see over here on the right, it's almost doubled the amount of movement in 26 years. So that's telling us it's speeding up. It's moving much faster towards Siberia than it ever has. So that movement in conjunction with a possible tilt in the Earth's axis 
And here's an article dated May 21st of 2015. This isn't anything new. This has been talked about for a long time. But the thing is, it's not clearly understood exactly how this happens or what happens or what the side effects are or what could be happening during a possible pole shift. Um, again, what if the Earth was tilting too far to the south? Or, you know, it had a wobble, so to speak, you know, a, a bigger wobble. Um, and let's say that this was perfectly normal. Say it, it's happened before and we just didn't know about it. Would we notice it? We'd probably notice it in sunrises. We'd notice it in sunsets. We would probably see earlier hurricane seasons in not only the northern but the southern hemisphere because of the sun angle. The sun angle is going to show us a lot of different things. For instance, Jason out of La Mesa, California, window here in his home that he's always lived in, faces north. He's never been able to see the sun through this window. This is a picture he took May 21st. From around the 33 degree latitude, there's the sun. Also have a very compelling photo out of Kingston, Jamaica, sent in by Devore. Actually, two photos. The one on the left she took of the sunset on April 15th of 2020. And you can see the sun right over here, just on the left side of that power pole. May 24th, 2020, a little over five weeks later, the sun, from the same exact position, is barely even in the picture. Here's the same power poles. Here's the power pole where it was at on April 15th. It's nowhere close to that, which it shouldn't be. It should be moving to the north. But look how far it moved in such a short period of time. It's, like I said, barely in the picture, or right around five and a half weeks. Incredible observation by Devore S. out of Kingston, Jamaica. So that tells me that the, the Earth's tilt may have changed a little bit because our perception of the sunrise and sunset has changed. Earth tilts a little farther south, it's going to put the sunset further north. So that's what she saw from right over here in, in Kingston, Jamaica. It's just a possibility. I'm saying that maybe both of these are going on. Magnetic north is changing and there's a slight tilt in the Earth's wobble or in the Earth's axis. I'm going to take you to an article over here at NASA that goes back a long time to 2003. And they're talking about something that occurred in March of uh, 2000, 20 years ago. Basically what happened, and I'm going to tell you what this article says, the south pole of the sun wandered up near the equator. Much like you're seeing over here, you're seeing what looks like another pole up here near the equator. You got this anomaly. What if that were the South Pole that had wandered up near the, the Central Atlantic Ocean? It's happened on the sun, but then it wandered back for unknown reasons. Like I said, a lot of this is not clearly understood. You got the wandering north. Let's say the South Pole also wandered. Let's say that there's a little tilt in the Earth's axis that's causing the sun to, to appear in different locations. Let's say that the South Pole wandered up like it's done on the sun. Well, it, it eventually, after just a couple of months, went back. And then a couple of months later, there was a complete magnetic reversal on the sun, which that happens all the time. We know that. Um, could that be happening here on Earth? I don't know. It's just something that I'm looking at. I'm comparing the two, even though they may not have any similarities at all with regard to you know, how, how quickly a potential pole reversal could occur. I don't know. I'm just saying that the sun's south pole wandered up into that same general area of the sun. Could that be the south pole wandering up, making it look like there's two. Just a thought, something that, that I've known about for a long time, but I've never seen anything like it on Earth until now. And we've seen a lot of anomalies on Earth with regard to temperature. We've seen some anomalies in the ecosystem. One thing that sticks out is these giant clovers that are showing up around the world. Here's one out of Germany sent in by Jody that's, again, as big as her hand. And we've seen three examples now. This is uh, out of Germany. We've seen one out of South Africa. We've seen one from over here in the United States in Northeast Georgia. These giant clovers, for whatever reason, they're huge, and they're normally not much bigger than a penny. So you got to ask yourself, what's causing that? You know, is it just a coincidence during these unusual times that we're seeing these mysterious anomalies in the Earth's magnetic field? Then we're also seeing things show up on radar that we don't normally see. 
Um, what if these things were always there, and when the magnetic shields fluctuate in energy, that energy, or absence thereof, reveals things in the atmosphere that show up on radar that we don't normally see. Like that right there, if that were a Doppler sweep, that should be on there all the time. It either is or it isn't. Why would it just show up part of the time? And that thing is 333 miles wide. I measured it. And you're going to see more examples of these things, whatever they are, on radar that are all different sizes and they're in different locations. That one I saw myself uh, two or three days ago. And again, they're at different times. They're not at a specific time, you know, with regard to the sun angle. They just appear. So it, it, it kind of implies to me that there's something else going on here. Bradley L. noticed a unique anomaly on here slightly different location than than the one i saw this is farther north and it too is is a different size that occurred at a different time uh, mine was in the morning this was more in the late afternoon 275 miles which is still huge but 275 miles wide here's another look at it here and i measured it from north to south nearly a perfect circle 275 miles and then a triangle appears. This was noticed right over here, just above Minnesota. You can see it right there. Perfect triangle. Look at that. It's undeniable. We've seen big giant circles here, up here, and you're going to see another one off to the left in a slightly different location. But that is a perfect triangle. Joshua H. noticed the big giant ring that showed up on radar. And that one, too, was quite large, 355 miles wide. That was like one of the bigger ones out of the most recent ones that have been sent in. 355 miles wide. Stephen O. noticed one. And again, these were at different times of the day. And this one, too, is a slightly different size. There's the measurement I, I used on, on Google Earth, 390 miles wide. So that one there approached 400. So we've had 330, 275, uh, 350. Here's one that's nearly 400. And they just kind of appear randomly. There's no pattern. And, and, and Doppler clearly has a pattern. It's, it's a, that's what it is. It, it works in patterns and sequences. Here's one sent in by Ruth A. And this one's just above the Canadian-US border. And this one was around, I think, 330 miles wide, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 333, basically, almost the same exact size as the one that I saw. Slightly different location, pretty close to the, to the same area, but they're all kind of, kind of unique. And maybe it could be the software platforms that give them the, their different uh, unique appeal or appearances. But here's something I saw just today. have no idea what this is. Could be just some sort of a, a glitch. It's not round. It doesn't have any type of symmetrical geometry. It's some sort of a weird looking a pattern that showed up right in here. Watch, you'll see it. Look at that. Isn't that weird? It's got the blue. It's got a color I've never seen before on radar. That, that brownish wine color right there. And then that anomaly there that, again, I've never seen anything quite like that on radar. I'm just simply sharing it with you guys because that's just another example of an anomaly that really I, it has no explanation. We've been seeing a lot of wild temperature swings across not only the United States but around the world. I know a couple of days ago, or maybe it was yesterday, up here in Vermont, northern Vermont, it was like 94 degrees it's been 109. Today it's supposed to be 110 down here in the desert southwest, which isn't uncommon, um, but it's May. We don't normally see those types of temperatures in May. They're seeing 107, 106, 108 over here in California, um, which, again, it's, it's May. It's a little early, but we've been seeing a lot of wild temperature swings across the United States, and I'm, I'm using the United States as an example because I pay, you know, very close attention to the, the weather in the United States and the temperature, and, and I notice these wild temperature swings, and we've been seeing them for several months, and I'm not talking just a, a few degrees, I'm talking 30 degrees, um, you know, from one week to another, 
from hot to cold, cold to hot, many, many new records have been set this year. And we're not even halfway through the year. So could it be related to a possible pole shift or the beginning thereof? I think so. But we don't know exactly what to expect because we've never been through one. So the pole, uh, the North Pole, especially the magnetic north, is wandering and it's gaining speed. So that's something that we just monitor and keep a close eye on. And once it gets going too fast, and I think you can kind of know, hey, the poles are getting ready to reverse um, because it has, like I said, picked up momentum exponentially just in the last 25 years, 26 years. It's almost doubled the amount of movement um, compared to the past 90, 402 miles compared to 740 or 58. So that's a very rapid increase in the movement of the magnetic north. Coming up in my next video, you're going to see a lot of unique lights in the sky. This is one of the many that I'm going to share with you. This was sent in by Wendy from over in Marina del Rey, California. Notice this light blazing through the sky. I've got this little video clip plus many other ones that I think you guys are going to really enjoy. Look for that in my next video. If you guys are new viewers, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click on this bell. That way you'll be notified each time I upload a new video. If you're current subscribers, double check. Make sure you're still subscribed and make sure that bell is still activated. If you guys have any photos you'd like to share, you can send those to reports at MrMBB333.com. All of the photos end up here at the Sky Phenomena Photo Gallery at the website and sometimes I'll use them in a picture slideshow just like you saw right here. Thanks for watching. Have a super day and be safe out there.